Madam Chairperson, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Heads of Agencies, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, my pleasure and privilege. Ghana's health insurance scheme has become the toast of many visiting countries who have come to share in our experiences, achievements, and of course, our challenges. Indeed, it signifies the departure from the global budgeting model for the Ministry of Health and providers, or public providers for that matter. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it introduces a legally structured provider-payer split with its inherent theft and space challenges, particularly at the onset. Ghana has challenges, but importantly, Ghana has made significant progress. What is innovative about Ghana's health insurance scheme? It covers both the formal and informal sector, both public and private facilities. Indeed, we have three forms or types of schemes. We have the social health insurance scheme, and we have the private mutuals and private commercial schemes. Our benefit package is considered to be one of the generous. It covers about 95% of disease burden in the country. Inpatient, outpatient services, maternal health services, and all emergencies are covered under the insurance scheme. This slide gives you some indication of growth or the trends since the inception in 2005. The law was enacted in 2003, but the health insurance scheme became operational in 2005. From the table you see there, you would observe that at the onset in 2005, outpatient utilization was just below 600,000, and by the close of 2011, December 2011, outpatient utilization had grown to over 25 million. Inpatient utilization was below 30,000 in 2005, and by the close of uh, December 2011, inpatient utilization had risen to almost 1,500. Now, this is just a, a slide that indicates the comparison of our income and expenditure. Yesterday, our distinguished Honorable Minister for Health in Ghana took us through the financing mechanism in Ghana. You would observe from this slide that at the onset, there was more than enough that went into investment through to 2008. In 2009, the insurance scheme now had to dwell on its investment as a way of financing the gap arising. Uh, indeed, sustainability is always measured within a defined time frame, and certainly not in infinity. We have gotten to a point of redefining sustainability, which requires additional funding, as well as cost containment strategies, or cost curtailment, as the case may be. Looking at our cost our, and our expenditure as against utilization, you could tell that Increase in utilization has implications for cost. And indeed, the growing confidence in the scheme and increase in membership and utilization has clear implications for cost. To address this, the health insurance scheme has taken the two major components of sustainability. One has to do with cost containment and two with additional funding. With regards to cost containment, a number of strategies have been put in place as a way of ensuring greater efficiency, value for money, and indeed to ensure sustainability, which requires some element of accountability. Indeed, clinical audits and a few others are the strategies, uh, ensuring that we have electronic claims management is another, and with regards to additional funding, the increase in the earmarked fund, the NHI levy, is one area. And uh, fortunately, Ghana has discovered oil. And uh, we're also looking at the petrochemical industry. We 
believe that early next year some action would be taken. Of course, 2012, this year, is an election year in Ghana, and uh, one would not expect government to increase tax, and that has affected the increase in the NHI levy. But of course, that is the option, and that is the way forward. We have tried to develop what we call the National Health Insurance Value Chain, which provides a clear indication of the various activities that one would have to undertake in order to ensure financial risk protection and eventually achieve the ultimate objectives of improving health status and patient satisfaction. Another significant lesson from Ghana has to do with the innovative way in which the health insurance scheme has been structured, an architecture that seeks to address the poor in a very significant manner. You will observe from this table that all under 18 years are exempt from the payment of premium. All 70 years and above are exempt from the payment of premium. SNIT contributors and SNIT pensioners are exempt from the payment of premium. Pregnant women are exempt from the payment of premium. And the poor are exempt from the payment of premium. This is just a strategy to ensure that we cover the poor. Again, the health insurance scheme has been tailored such that it dovetails into the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. The free registration and access to health care seeks to address the problems of the poor and vulnerable and therefore addresses the issues related to MDG1. All under 18 years exempt from the payment of premium addresses MDG4, child mortality. And we have free maternal care. Pregnant women are exempt from the payment of premium. So again, that addresses MDG5. And then malaria, TB, and all others are also uh, uh, within the benefit package. We have a nonpartisan political will and commitment. The health insurance scheme was originally conceived by the current government. It lost elections, then the, the current opposition enacted the law, and we have the current government deepening the social health insurance scheme. So essentially, the ingredient of a nonpartisan or a bipartisan political will and commitment is an ingredient and a feature in the Ghana's health insurance scheme. We have a comprehensive accreditation system that, has, that is homegrown, developed in Ghana, which addresses all the needs regarding a certification of public, private, and mission hospitals. We have a mix of provider payment mechanisms. We use capitation to address for payment for, for primary health care. We have the diagnostic-related groupings for tertiary care and we apply fee for service for medicines. We have a call center that provides voice, particularly to our subscribers, to be able to log challenges across the country to inform management decision making. And we have an annual stakeholder meeting to ensure that stakeholders are kept informed and also get their input and contribution as a way of ensuring efficiency. Of course, we have quite a number of challenges. Internal challenges include financial sustainability. What is important is to be able to have an actuarial analysis and to understand what the financial implications would be into the future as a way of redefining sustainability. Identification of the poor, despite the strategy, the innovative strategy of addressing and attracting the poor into the scheme, we still have a task of targeting the poor and ensuring that we get all covered under the scheme. We have ICT challenges. Of course, this uh, 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 is a challenge that we are overcoming. Among the external challenges, we have moral hazard, both demand side and supply side moral hazard. This requires that any country intending to implement a social health insurance scheme would have to develop a very efficient monitoring and evaluation framework, and to have an efficient uh, 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 enterprise uh, uh, risk management framework. 
Pharmaceutical supply chain challenges, we have high medical cost. Medicines account for over 53 percent of our claims payment. And of course, improvement in the pharmaceutical supply chain would in your to our benefit, it would drive down cost, and we're happy to say that it's a challenge that the Ministry of Health has taken up, and uh, we are working seriously towards that. Quality of care challenges and waiting time. Through our clinical audits, which we introduced in 2010, we have become alive to most of the challenges and difficulties uh, uh, regarding particularly at the uh, 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 provider and supply side uh, moral hazard, wrong application of tariffs, irrational prescription of medicines, and a host of others. What is important is to understand what the challenges are to be able to define strategies to address them. The way forward to enhance financial sustainability, intensify clinical audits, have a, a, a countrywide rollout of capitation. Currently, capitation is being piloted and uh, we intend to roll out capitation by January next year to increase uh, membership to uh, secure universal health coverage through a mandatory health insurance scheme. The current law is currently under review. It has been approved by parliament. It's been gazetted. It's been laid in parliament. And we are hoping that within the next couple of weeks, we'll have a new law that makes health the social health insurance scheme a mandatory scheme for every Ghanaian, quite apart from any private insurance scheme you'd want to uh, uh, join, you have to be a member of the social health insurance scheme. And again, to strengthen audit risk management systems. And also, we are considering including mental health, family planning, prostate cancer to our benefit package, and also include persons with disability. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Ghana's health insurance scheme has been a Ghanaian initiative homegrown with local leadership through learning through experience and adaptation. The health seeking behavior of Ghanaians have changed and uh, over 90% of patients you find in both public and private facilities in Ghana today are health insurance subscribers. Indeed, over 85% of internally generated funds of our public facilities in particular are derived from health insurance scheme. There is high and increasing public confidence in the scheme and with a bipartisan political support and uh, 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 political will and support, the scheme is rising by the day. What is critical to our growth is the collaboration, the cooperation, and support from the Ministry of Health. Indeed, without the support of the Ministry of Health, running a social health insurance scheme becomes a real challenge. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on the basis of this Ghana's health insurance scheme, was awarded a global award for excellence in 2010, essentially for innovation, creativity, financial risk protection, leadership, scalability, and an opportunity for sharing knowledge. This is just a brief on Ghana's health insurance scheme. Indeed, 10 minutes is just inadequate to take us into any depth. But we believe that question time would offer the opportunity to delve deep into other areas that we may not have discussed in this presentation. Thank you very much.